Okay, so welcome lovely listeners. Um, Today's podcast, I have the lovely Grant Lee Clapham. Um, Me and Grant Lee know each other, um, as quite a few of my podcasts have been up to this point, um, through, we met through the online education that we were both learning. And um, Grant Lee's uh, a good friend of mine. And we both have, we have quite a few things in common, including being seekers of the truth. Um, and that all sounds quite dramatic, but um, obviously we're in strange old times um, and through these strange old times, there's been a lot of stuff that's come to light in terms of what's happening in the world. And I know Grant Lee is very much into um, absorbing that information. So I thought it'd be really good to get Grant Lee on. So I'm going to introduce you now and say, hello, Grant Lee. Thank you very much. That's okay. An absolute pleasure as always, Mel. Always. Oh. Um, so... So yeah, so basically, obviously we've been sharing some content and stuff. And I think from my perspective, um, there, like you said earlier, we were having a chat before we, we came on. Your class is a conspiracy theorist, but we don't believe it's conspiracy. We obviously believe it's the truth. Um, but there are so many people that believe what the media is telling them and what the governments are telling them and we don't, you know, we, we know there's another agenda at hand. And um, yeah, we've had some backlash and people think we're off our heads and all the rest of it. So I just thought it would be good to get you on and have a little chat about it really. So, so how, did you, how did you sort of get into learning like the stuff that we've been like watching and, and reading about? I think for me, it was just, um... Like you just see over the years, I, I stopped watching mainstream news properly, um, uh, you know, years ago because I realised, and it, it was an interesting, it was kind of a bit of a, a light bulb moment, which I hate that expression, but it was a bit of a light bulb moment where, where someone said that you basically get exposed to more hate, murder, rape, genocide, you know, crime, all the negative aspects of humanity. Um, but before you've even got out of bed in the morning by checking the news or checking Facebook, you know, first thing in the morning, than someone who was born 100 years ago probably got exposed to in their entire life. And, and the, the effect that has on your, your mental well-being and your happiness and your general state as a human being is quite significant. So I kind of stopped uh, watching the news a while ago. I watch it for more kind of interest purposes just to see what's being said and what, what, what kind of is going on in the world. But rather than actually watch it as a consumer of, you know, really interested in the news and, and to find out all this good stuff. So um, for me, I kind of noticed over the years a, a real degradation in the balance and the, the objectivity of the news. Um, there were certain, you know, 10, 15 years ago, Channel 4 News was probably the best in terms of like it would do, it would, you know, tell you the news here. It would give an opposing view over this side. There'll be a bit of debate, you know, they get an expert on this side, an expert on that side. And then whoever was was you know doing covering that story would then say this is what we think and and but you would be left to your own you know your own common sense your own intellect and your own you know perception of what you think the reality is to make your you know whichever camp you lay on that seems to have completely disappeared now uh, in in general where you're basically we're just being pushed news we're being pushed as a consumer of it without any balance, without any um, you know, opposing views. However strange and crazy the story is, there's always two sides to every story. There's always opposing views. It's just the nature of the universe. There's going to be opposing views. Um, and that seems to have disappeared. So from that respect, um, there's been a general degradation, in my opinion, of course, a general degradation of that. I think with this whole um, the pandemic and all the other stuff in recent times, the, the, the race riots, that, that object, objectivity is, is absolutely zero now in the mainstream media, you know? Um, and then I started to see people who were sort of speaking their view and it wasn't conspiracy theorists. It was, it was, you know, eminent um, surgeons, virologists, um, people who work within the NHS and, and other healthcare professionals just saying what they thought. And then suddenly you saw them get deplatformed and, and censored on YouTube and Facebook. And, and I thought, whoa, this, yeah, this, this isn't right. This, this is wrong. We need that objectivity. And it's not people scaremongering. It's not a danger to people. People make up their own mind about how they, they, they perceive those views and what, what camp they fall in. And to see that censorship. And 
an interesting thing about freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Censorship always occurs after the point of delivery. You know, if you if you start, or sorry, the, the actions or the, the repercussions of that occur after the point of delivery. The whole point of freedom of speech is you can say whatever the hell you want about whatever subject, whether it be something benign or whether it be insightful, you know, inciting kind of racial hatred or, or terrorism. You still have the right to say it, but after you've said it, then you bear the consequences of what you said. So these, you know, um, people who want to say anything, if they go out on open forum and say it, then they accept the repercussions. But you don't censor people before the event. You know, that, that censorship and suppression. You have, you know, the courts and, and the, the legal system get involved if you say something that incites ra racial hatred, for instance, which is absolutely wrong. Um, and you should be punished for saying things like, things like that. But you still still have the inherent right to say what you want. Again, that's a very controversial subject, and I'm not by any means advocating any form of, of, of that kind of um, extremist views, but the whole point of the whole freedom of speech is that you have the right to say whatever you want. And that, in this case, with all the, the pandemic and a lot of stuff that's going on in the news at the moment, they're censoring before the point of delivery. That someone says something they think you know, is a bit subversive, therefore they're deplatforming them and taking their voice away from them completely. And that, to me, just sat really, it just did not sit comfortably whatsoever. So then I went on a bit of a mission, really, just to get people to, to wake up to this and, and have that, that light bulb moment and, and actually look at, look at what they're being told by the mainstream media. Maybe ask some questions of themselves. And I'm not saying people should stick their neck out and start, you know, spouting their own rhetoric. You know, that's not what I'm saying at all. That's, that's their choice. But just to be aware uh, and exercise a bit of common sense, a bit of intellect onto what they're being told and then marry it up with the situation they're experiencing. Uh, and that's the thing I find with, with a lot of this, um, is the, the information that we're being fed doesn't necessarily match my, my personal reality. And, and that, to me, needs, needs highlighting, and people need to maybe look at their personal reality in terms of you know, infection rates and mortality rates and, and all the other things that are going on, and actually say, what, is this matching what, what BBC News are telling me? Is this matching what I'm hearing on CNN? And, and if the answer is no, then to start asking those questions and say, well, is what I'm being told the truth? Uh, and if it's not the truth, what is the truth? So why, that was part of a little journey into this, really. And um, yeah. yeah. So, so why do you think it's being censored? Wow. Do you know what? I have absolutely no idea. Um, there's a lot of conspiracy theories around, some very dark ones to do with, um, you know, smashing of paedophile rings. There's some crazy ones out there. Um, uh, and... I, I, to be honest, I, I wouldn't even like to speculate at this stage. Um, I'm not sure I even really kind of fall in any particular camp on that because it's such a crazy situation we're in at the moment um, that, that it's, it's, it's almost uncharted territory, isn't it? We're, we're almost going back to the, the days of communism and, and the rise of uh, fascism in Germany, you know, in terms of the suppression and, and the, the control of the media. Um, but then we don't know the reasons. Uh, I'd like to think it's for, it's it's for a good reason somewhere. There's there's some really good conspiracy theories, but in terms of um, that actually you know that actually good the, a good reason they were actually distracted away from something. But but that something is is to actually sort out some very negative and nasty aspects of our of our society. Um, well, we might have been watching well, well, this space really. Uh, there yeah. was something weird going on with my sound. There's definitely something weird going on. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of stuff coming out about um, paedophilia that very, you know, very prolific, um, you yeah, know, that's, that's kind of leached into all areas of, you know, royalty, the government, you know, um, famous people, all sorts. And, and there's a lot of anecdotal evidence coming out from a lot of different sources. There's interesting looking at the mainstream media as well. There is starting to some, some of this stuff starts to trickle out into some you know, little news stories on the, on you know BBC News website. Sometimes you get these little stories coming out. They're not hitting the main news, but they're starting to trickle out. Um, if that is the case, and it is smashing this huge, you know, paedophile ring, I suspect it's a bit of desensitisation because if you suddenly break a story like that that involves you know people's you know famous people and people that have been revered and, and looked up to you know for generations. Um, then that could have a really significant impact on society. It could destabilize society if, if, if this comes out in one big bang. So maybe there's a bit of desensitization, just planting seeds to get people into the idea that this may be true. And then when it does come out, 
you know, it, it's not a sudden shock. It's, it's a, oh God, yeah, we, we thought this might be happening, you know, which, which eases that kind of transition into that, that thoughts or that way of, way of looking at people, you know, because you are essentially, you know, turning on, on their head, people who, who you know, role models for kids, adults, whatever. And uh, I think that that's a very, it's, it's a big, it's a tinderbox, isn't it? And we saw how the, the whole race riots blew up. Yeah. Um, and, and we don't want the same, we don't want to suddenly get the truth out, but the, the actually saying the truth in, in a certain way causes more destabilization, more deaths, more carnage, more chaos than, than actually suppressing it in the first place. So, so that's my, my thought on some of this maybe, but again, that, that's speculation on my part, really. I don't, I don't know by any stretch of the imagination, but. Can, can I just ask what the sound is like from me to you? Can you, uh, do no. I? Yeah. No, you sound perfect on this end. Yeah, yeah. There's something weird going on my end, but so I'm just hoping. Part of your northern accent, of course, but yeah, apart from that, <laughs> <it's fine. laughs> um, yeah. So okay, so you 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 sort of talked about um, famous people and and all the rest of it, role models. Well, it's already happened, hasn't it? That's you know Jimmy Savile and people yeah, like yeah. Rolf Harris and all that. So that's not new news. Um, no. well, I think it's know. more of the extent, isn't it? It's, if it's pro yeah, as yeah. prolific as but some of these conspiracy theories, I don't like to call them conspiracy theorists, that again, they're truth seekers that have been labelled, you know, labelled into that camp to, to kind of debunk and devalue their, their word. But, but yeah, if it's as prolific as, as people are saying it is, then, you know, it, it's eye-watering. It is. Eye it, it's it? unbelievable. I mean, I, I was looking at something the other day and I saw Richard Branson's name mentioned. Wow, Jesus. And I was like, you've got to be joking. Um, you know, I really hope it's not true. You know, I really so do hope I. it's not true. To be honest, you know, but. I mean, o Oprah Winfrey has been mentioned right from the beginning, and like she's been a hero to me, um, and yeah. ever since I was young, you know, I've just well, she's probably been a hero to every single se single female who's been aspiring to make something of themselves, you know, out of the out of the mundane nine to five, you know, and actually actually break out. So yeah, Jesus, I mean that, and that's what I say is it's that destabilization effect of of crushing people's dreams and hopes and aspirations and, and you know if you take away these role models in one foul swoop without without easing people into that mindset and you, you're going to cause massive problems not just social social problems but you know you're talking about mental health depression loss of purpose all that other horrific stuff that comes with you know things like this it's absolutely eye-watering isn't it it is i mean and, and just for clarity i think like when I started looking at this information, it, it was all a bit confusing and a bit conflicting. And, and some, yeah. somebody was saying one thing, somebody was saying another. And like you said, you know, the, um, the researchers that came out with the um, stuff about the actual virus itself and how yeah. none of that made sense. And then, then as we sort of got further down the rabbit hole, if you like, then it was like, oh, right, okay, so. I, th I think we need to be a bit clearer on here because some people listening to this might be like, what the hell are they talking about? So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, um, so basically, we believe that there is this deep state cabal, Illuminati, call them what you want. And it's, it's 13 families, is my understanding. And they basically control everything, don't they? They control the media, they own the media, they own Hollywood. They own the banks, they own the pharmaceuticals, they, they own everything. Um, and certainly in America, it's a lot worse than the UK in terms of, um, there's a, an organization called Monsana, Monsana is it? Mm -hmm. And it's all about genetically modifying food and just taking away any... any. Yeah, there's some interesting stuff around that, isn't it? Like the, 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 you can only, farmers can only plant GM soya, for yeah. instance, and they actually get, face, face huge fines and, and potential prison sentences. If they're caught, you know, actually um, planting natural, you know, organic soya beans, like crazy food, because yeah. there's a monopoly. The big, the big, um, uh, big agricultural, you know, consortiums have got got you know monopoly on on certain things. And I think a lot of this stuff. I mean, it's it's it is very out there. For me, I, I always like to get some element of truth. And I think that the, the way I always look at it is to follow the money around the connections. You know, look at the connections between these people. If, if someone in, in you know the State Department is, is, is mandating this, then you look at his connections and suddenly realise he's got a connection to you know a big pharmaceutical consortium, or he's the head of a governing body to do with you know pharmaceuticals, and you think, well, hang on a minute, that's that, that's much, yeah. that's no, that's nowhere near beyond arms arms length, is it? That there's 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 complicity in there, isn't there? And um, 
and uh, you know, and you look at it and it just stinks, absolutely stinks. But it's all in plain sight. That's, that's the crazy thing. And I know for some reason we've all been desensitized to it, and and we just accept what's happening. And um, I think as a generation, we've just we seem to have just lost the fight in ourselves. I, yeah. People just seem to roll over and accept their their situation. And that think- question, and that that's what I find really difficult to stomach. And I've always been a bit of a fighter. I've always fought against a little bit of authority and and pushed back a little bit when I think something's not quite right. Mm. And there doesn't seem to be many people around these days. And the younger generation, are, I think, are even more complacent than 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 I am, and and you are, and you know our generation anyway. And um, it doesn't there doesn't seem to be that fight anymore, that spark. And it's just it just seems a really dangerous situation that we're just and um, just having all our freedoms and liberties nibbled away. Yeah. And then suddenly we we wake up one day and go, oh my god, we can't even go to the shops now without having carrying papers around so the police can do spot checks and you just feel I feel like we're heading into that that communist state where you know the, there'll be two societies though there'll be the upper class society that have got free reign and have all the money and the control and then then everybody else who's living under the thumb of, of you know an, an oppressive society and you know it's bad enough now if you get on the bus you have to wear a mask and even if there's no one on the bus and and uh irrespective of what your beliefs are around that and whether you think that's harmful for your own health and um yeah it just it just seems very we're just under a very controlling and dominating environment at the moment and uh which isn't in our best interest as, as we know and no, no it, it's so hard to it's so hard to work you know i've got friends that you know they they they're just like you know i talk about donald trump because um it seems to be that he's an absolute legend with all of this and because he's portrayed as such a buffoon in the media and that they've been going gunning for him since he got in, even before he got in. And I saw some footage the other day, actually, which made me laugh, um, where, you know, on the run up to 2016, there was people being interviewed. Tom Hanks was one and um, a couple of others. And they were like, there is no chance Trump. Yeah, they were just laughing, basically laughing, weren't they? Yeah, because yeah, it, uh, it was rigged, just wasn't laughing. it? It was yeah. supposed to be rigged for Hillary to win. And I don't know how they did it, but they, you know, Trump got in and they must, their jaws must have hit the floor. Yeah, and that's really interesting. I mean, like he's, it's, it's, again, it's the suppression of news. It's, it's the deciding what you're subjected to. Like a few months ago, he, um, he basically transferred the Federal Reserve uh, into the Treasury. Like the Federal, and that, that to me, that, that's, that's news of the decade. You know, that, that is taking control back because the federal reserve was never owned by the government it was owned by a bunch of very high profile influential families and the federal reserve have always held the government to, to ransom basically because they they control the, the the currency they control the monetary um all aspects of of the, the the monetary aspects of the us and um for trump to basically do a land grab and, and sort of you know grab it all back and suck it into the treasury it's massive news I didn't hear a thing about it anywhere no one's talking about it um, but by all accounts, um, China have now um, uh, finally disbanded all of their um, communist um, party now and have now returned to a federation. When did that? that, that well, well, yeah, exactly. And uh, I haven't actually checked the, the validity of that, but I've heard it from a few different people now that that happened in the last few months. That's not hit the news. Even if they were thinking about doing it, that's mainstream. That's main news, that's isn't it? Really that's really massive. Yeah. That's massive. That's an end end of a communist um, you know, regime. Whole end of a whole communist wrestle. Well, look at what regime. Yeah, you know, nothing. But we're quite happy to talk about Grimsby and it's uh, you know how many new cases it's had and that hit frontline news. You know, it, 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 it's crazy, absolutely crazy. And I think, you know, I think if it, if all this stuff is true, you know, and again, I can't put my hand on my heart and say it's all definitely true, but it's certain. There's enough information coming out from enough independent sources. With the same story that that kind of alludes to the fact that, that there's there's you know it can be corroborated that way it's a bit anecdotal at times but but if this is all true and it's all being suppressed it's criminal it's absolutely criminal you know and, and you're right it's the point behind it what is the point why, why are we suppressing this why are we suddenly focusing on all the fear all the negativity all that you know submissive you know that the news that, that causes the, the nation to be submissive and and you know frightened and and just bend its knee to every single new new policy and new new law and new um, I don't know whatever act comes out without any question without any fight and you know without any balance of views it, it doesn't make sense but 
yeah, I guess time will tell, won't it? You know. You mentioned the new generation, you know, even being even more complacent than than we are. The thing is, and, and I was watching or reading something the other day, and I was like, well, that makes sense. So you know, like all of this stuff that's in place. Um, so like I was watching uh, something about um, when you're when you have to register your birth. Um, there's two birth certificates. One is in capitals. Your name is in capitals. I might get this wrong, but which basically means you're a corporation, not a person. You're a dead soul. Um, and then the second... Yeah, I've heard that before, actually. I've not looked into it, but yeah. yeah I've and the second birth certificate then is, you don't even know, it's been printed. And it goes off to the government and then they can basically trade on you um, and earn a lot of money on you, you know, for years and years and years. Um, but so all of this stuff that's in place that we just take as the norm was all, you know, invented, if you like, Christ knows how many years ago, decades ago, maybe hundreds, I don't know, hundred years ago, whatever. And because we're born into it and we don't really do our research and we just accept it, like you said, this is just yeah. the norm and we don't think we've got any power, then they've been able to nibble away at our freedom. Yeah. And, and even Basically though- Basically like, like, you're like a zoo animal born in cap captivity, aren't we at the moment? Yeah, we're just it, born into it. That, that's our social construct. That's the framework of our reality. And, um, and if they decide to move us to a different cage, you just move to a different cage, you don't think anything of it. You know, whereas if you're born in the wild and you get captured and taken into captivity, then you've got that awareness of what's beyond the cage, you know? And um, I think that's where we, we are at the moment. I think, you know, a lot of the, um, social media has got got a lot of influence in this you know i think a lot of the, the the kind of the the entertainment industry in terms of you know people more interested in love island and, and all that other rubbish than, yeah. than actually what's actually going on in the world you know i think that's got a lot to do with it you know for our generation we grew up on you know two two or three channels on tv four if you're really lucky and you're, you're living in a valley you know and um so you kind of i suppose that yeah, I might I'd say this. I don't want to, you know, devalue any any generation or any particular person. I'm just saying it's it's just the nature of how people grow up and the environment they grow up in, isn't it? Um, you know, some amazing people who are who are, you know, uh, whatever they're called, the generation. I forgot what they're called Generation Z, whatever. Was no, it generation? No. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, whatever. That, that are really fighting this and and you know really standing up, which I think is very brave because. We get to our age, we don't really care about what people think of us anymore so much, do we? Like, you know, but I know for you know, when I was in my sort of late teens and early twenties, like what people thought of me was the whole world. And yeah, you know, yeah. people that age to stand up, I think, is absolutely commendable, you know, to actually put their head above the parapet and say what they think, but you know, irrespective of what people then come back to them with, is bloody bloody brave. But um I think on the whole that just society just seems to be dumbed down now, isn't it? We've just sort of lost our spark a little bit as hum human beings, you know, and I think and the other thing is it's sad i find but. yeah it is sad and and that's why people think we're bonkers because yeah, yeah. you know they haven't you know they've just accepted it and they for, for whatever reason there isn't a desire in them to try and no, so i should ask questions yeah yeah and and there's t there's been times when i've been like consuming the content and thinking shit the bet is this really real you know this se seems like a friggin hollywood movie what i'm reading right now it's like um, Truman, isn't it? Yeah, and but then I was watching a, a two-year-old Russell Brand was being interviewed by Alan Carr, Chatty Man. Mm -hmm. um, it came up on my YouTube yesterday, I think. And um, so I just watched it. And it was like Russell was talking about the Illuminati two years yeah. ago. You know, and we've been hearing it, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce are mentioned as part of it and all that sort of thing. And it's, it's like folklore. It's like, oh, no, that's just a myth. You know, that's that's how it's treated, isn't it? It's just and you were talking about the, the generation have been absolutely bombarded with social media and everything. And, and I was thinking, because like my son is 21, he's into all the um, you know, crap rap as I call it, you know, all the stuff that's that's um how it is today. You know, we I in our generation it was boy bands, wasn't it? They yeah. now well, got, not me, but you maybe, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so they've now got, you know, all of this sort of, um, sort of, grunt, I don't even know what it's called, but you know what I mean. And, yeah. and there's, 
and then you find out that there's a lot of subliminal stuff that's going into these um, songs. And then in the yeah. videos, you know, there's all this symbolism going on and Lady Gaga's been mentioned and people like that. And it's like, you don't stand a chance, you know, unless you've got the brain to think, oh, maybe, like you said, go and uh, experience the wild for a bit. Yeah. Um, you just take it and you just accept yeah. it. Music's really interesting, actually, because years, I mean, I just think like, um, I guess I'm really old now, but, but going back to things like Pink Floyd and The Wall, you know, that, that, was, that was them fighting the, the system that was, and the whole punk era and, and all that was all fighting the system. There doesn't seem to be, through music, that fighting anymore. You know, music was always the media in which, a medium in which people would like stand up against the government and say their thing and, you know, and, and get all that angst out. And, and that, that's gone the other way now, but what it seems to anyway, it's... Uh, it doesn't seem any of I could be wrong because I'm not massively uh, on the pulse in terms of music these days. But yeah, you know, years ago, you know, in the seventies and eighties, it was all that was it, wasn't it? That was that was their that was their re reaction to the government and the the rules and the, the oppression, and that's how they spoke out. But yeah, it doesn't seem to exist these days to me. Right. Not to me anyway. You know, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I can't even think of anyone in today's world. Yeah. You know, in, in the younger generation anyway. That's 20 years ago, you could have rattled off all of them. I mean, even to the point where Oasis and Blur, they were, they were still quite anti-establishment, weren't they? And yeah. did the hell what the hell they wanted. And, you know, you had Rage Against the Machine and all that. The other ones, they just, you know, said their piece. And that, none of that's here. Where, where they, I'm sure they exist, but, but you know, it's certainly not on the mainstream. We're saying you won't hear them on Radio 1 and all oh. the other stations people listen to. Yeah. I mean, my son, I, I sort of, I've been trying to feed him stuff. And he's like... He did watch David Icke um, and he did find it interesting, but the other stuff, he's just been like, mom, just leave me alone. You know, I'm not interested, all that. And then I had a really proud moment. I think it was yesterday or the day before. And um, I was like, morning. He's like, morning. He said, I had a bit of a late night. I stayed up watching conspiracy theories. I said, oh, did you? And um, so he, what he'd been watching was um, apparently, so um, the earth's core, Mm -hmm. um, he likened it to an apple, you know, like you've got holes through the core. Yeah, so, yeah. And he was talking about these underground tunnels, and not okay. not underground tunnels, but like we know, but you know, proper into the Earth's, um, you know, core, basically. Um, and he said, apparently, there's really tall people that live down there and everything. I said, well, I've heard about the giant people, you know, that were all sorts of uh, skeletons that were dug up, especially in Central America. Yeah, yeah. North America, of people yeah. who are on average, at least over eight foot, eight to 15 feet tall, aren't they? All sorts yeah, of, yeah, really and it's, been, it's, well. accounts, but yeah, yeah. it's been proven, but still, you, if you said that to somebody that, they'd yeah. be like, shut up. Um, but yeah, it was on about, and then apparently it's quite, fer it. it's quite fertile down there and all that, and then he starts yeah, talking yeah, about, yeah. he starts talking about, mom, did you ever hear about the two green children that were found? And I haven't, and I keep meaning to <laughs> Yeah, apparently they just turned up out of nowhere. Um, yeah. One of them, died and one of them i think is still around so i keep meaning to google wow. it to see where yeah I've, I've looked. i think these it's really interesting actually about your son because that that that's exactly what you what you want to, i mean that's my purpose is to plant seeds i'm not there to you know plant rhetoric i'm not anti-establishment necessarily i'm not anti-government i'm not trying to incite you know any anything really i'm not even trying to incite a movement i'm just trying to get people to look at the truth and actually ask questions and 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 bring people forward that way i'm trying to keep it in a a very positive and and you know high vibrational um aspect and not get dug down into the real kind of dark conspiracy aspects of it but but i think a lot of these things you plant seeds you say these things people go oh, yeah you're nuts granny whatever yeah yeah it's talking rubbish you know yeah and uh, funny enough, someone said to me the other day actually um because i was saying about the i do a lot of things tongue-in-cheek you know i say well you wait in six months you know you'll be watching the queen on trial or something like that you know for drinking yeah. the blood through them. <laughs> <laughs> they say things like that and, and they go yeah and they, and they said um Granny, see i always thought you were, i always think you're intelligent and, th and then you say something like that and i went oh no 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 you're coming from the wrong perspective intelligent and you say something like that you know so which means you should believe at least listen to what what people say and and but i think what happens is these seeds get planted and it's all about people's um perception of reality and their their framework and their and they're kind of, um, you know, almost like their comfort zone or things they're really knowledgeable about. Like might be, for instance, it might be the financial markets, for instance, and 
and you say all this stuff and they go ask a lot of crap yeah whatever granny just nuts you know you, you need to get a life and go out more and all that yeah <laughs> and, and then something will happen in term in the in terms of oh, have you lost me am i still there so i approach yeah. for a bit then and but something will happen um and, and they'll they'll read something that's very familiar to them and they know a, a, about a subject they know a lot about so for, for, for instance it might be the financial markets it might be that thing where donald trump has assumed the fed into the into the treasury and then and then they'll suddenly think well i never heard about that and they'll and they'll then look into it and that's what sets people on their journey is when something that they are very familiar with it's within their framework of reality their their kind of framework of what what they think the world is is that gets kind of smashed um and then they go back and think well, all that other stuff grantly all that other stuff mel was saying maybe there's some element of truth in that and that's what sets people on that journey so i think for us for, for me certainly I'm just all about planting seeds in people's heads yeah. and getting people to, to question. And when that put that when that light bulb moment happens, whether it's now or six months or ten years down the line, then they go on that journey and they go, "Hang on a minute, this doesn't all add. This something doesn't add up." And and if if the media are lying about this, what else are they lying about? Or if they're not they're not showing me this story, what other stories are not showing me? You know, what other news is going on in the world that we're not being told about? And and that to me is the um, that to me is the, the the kind of key to all this really so um yeah i think if we can do that then you know a it keeps our conscience clear that we've we've at least fought the good fight yeah and for me i want to be able to tell my kids when all this comes out either i had the humility that i was completely wrong and i i stuck my paw up and go yeah i was wrong i was just full of rubbish i was going down a rabbit hole or i fought it i stuck up i stuck my head above the, above the parapet and, and i said what i feel and what i feel to be right and 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 that's it i'm not in any kind of righteous indignation at the end of it but but just that i had the guts to stand up to it and i think that that for, for the children is a valuable lesson that you stand up you accept whatever ridicule you're going to get whatever hate and anger and and response you're going to get from people because they're going to be both they're going to be people who think you're awesome and say yeah right yeah or people who go you're flipping nuts and then get angry and there'll be abusive people who will call you every name under the sun um and everything in between but you accept all that on the chin and um and, and you with a clear conscience say well i, I said what i needed to say because it was my truth and and you fight your corner and i think if you can display that to your children rather than just be you know a sheeple as they call them and just you know be a drone and roll over and just accept everything that's going on whether it's good for you or bad for you or whether you agree with it or not i think that that's that to me is is what it's all about really yeah absolutely um you know there's two rules of thought isn't there like do what we've been doing and sharing the content and, and take the ridicule or yeah. do nothing <laughs> and and you know some people would say well look there's no point because the people that are asleep for want of a better phrase they're not they're not going to take any notice anyway but like you said I, i've kind of been where you are it's planting those seeds and yeah. you know it's it's putting it out there for those that want to digest it for those that don't don't yeah. you know um so it's yeah, like COVID death certificate thing. You know, I've been saying from day one, as soon as I heard about it, that you know they're 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 putting COVID on death certificates when COVID had nothing to do with the death. They died. They may have died with it, but they didn't die from it. Right. You know, that's a massive distinction. You know, you might have coronary heart disease that you or, or or latter stages of Alzheimer's, and you catch COVID and you pass away. That doesn't mean you died of COVID. You could have had a cold. You could have had a, you know, you could have bang banged your thumb with a nail. Or you know, it's a that doesn't mean you died from it. You know. And and there's a few people I know who have um, like first hand, you know, know in the first person now, which is which is where generally a lot of this stuff will, will come from. Um, who've had first hand experience of people they know who have died and COVID's gone down on the death certificate, and that that's a really awakening moment for them because they've gone, hang on a minute, this isn't right because it's suddenly it's happened to someone they care about and it's in their sphere of of, of influence, and uh, and then they go on that little journey of questioning everything and. But this is what's interesting, and I've had a few discussions with a lot of people about this. Um, the whole way that media is being suppressed, it worked in the 40s because you had no other means. If you didn't read it in the newspaper or saw it on the, the newsreels, um, you know, it, you, you didn't have any access to it. Someone came and did a leaflet drop or you had some, some subversive, you know, little, pub, little kind of um, cottage industry publications that would go and do leaflet drops and, and things. You had no exposure to the other side. Now, they can't suppress every 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 aspect of the internet you know they, they can they can control facebook and youtube and twitter and the mainstream ones but there's a whole raft of other ones out there you know 
and news gets out because it's in, people record news as it's happening and then yeah. it gets posted. Yeah. And so that suppression of information it, it is fine initially, but as people's experience contradicts that, that mainstream view, then that's when people start waking up and start people and people start questioning what's going on. And that is happening. You know, people who I thought were massively unconscious just literally lived in their their bubble and no fault of their own. It's not not a, any way degrading them as a person, but just that's that's where they were. You know, it's all about getting up, getting a job, you know, complying to all the whatever the government tells us, listening to what's going on in the world, because that's what uh, Sky News are telling them and carrying on. That, People like that are now waking up because suddenly their granddad, um, who died in a nursing home uh, alone because they weren't allowed to go and see him, um, has now had COVID put down his death certificate when he wasn't even ill. And they're going, whoa, I got a minute. This is a yeah. problem. Right. You know, and that's the sort of thing that, that is, that is going to scupper all of this, um, this, this fake news and, and the, the media suppression bit. And it will be a trickle effect. It will be that, you know, one person wakes up and then two people and then four people and then eight people. And, and that just takes time. But you can st- I certainly, within people I know, I've started to see that happen now. And I think in six months' time, we're going to be in a different situation altogether, I think, personally. So you're yeah. right, it's planting seeds and, and just getting people to, so when it does happen to them, that they, they kind of open their eyes properly rather mm-hmm. than just dismiss it. And, you know, Definitely. question, 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 question. Yeah, so, I mean, the whole, the whole inflating the COVID numbers, um, again, you know, there could be two rules of thumb on that. For me, um, I think in the earlier days of consuming this information, it seemed to be that this was to get a mandatory vaccination out there. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, but but more recently, I'm wondering because obviously that vaccination thing, I don't know what's they they've passed acts and all the rest of it, but I know I'm pretty sure Trump said it wasn't going to be mandatory in America. No, um, he certainly said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what this country's view is, but no. So, but then the other the, the other thing I'm thinking now is. Um, is it so so my belief is that the deep state um, released this virus and um, w- with a view to putting the fear of God into the world and bringing further control in and being able to um, with this vaccination basically bump people off um, and sort out population and all the rest of it um, and more to it than that that's very simplified but then more recently I've been thinking it seems to be that the likes of Trump and the actual good guys have sort of hijacked this to to carry out their own uh, mission which is to get rid of these paedophile rings yeah yeah so I'm still wondering because we're still having the you know the, the toll go up and they're still putting Covid down even when it's not why I kind of lost my train of thought there but but why why is that still happening if if the good guys are doing what they're supposed to be doing? And I think it's out? probably back to what we said earlier. They can't suddenly do a massive reversal. They can't okay. just suddenly like it's been you know fear, 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 cases, deaths, da da da. And then Monday morning, everything's fine. Like the sun's out. You know, let's just stop. And I think that they, there's got to be. It's all about desensitizing people and 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 um, desensitizing is the wrong word. Actually, it's it's about conditioning people to change and. You, know, you get massive changes that turn their their reality on its head literally overnight will we'll destabilize everything people the economy you know society and you can't do that it, they, they've got a there's a duty of care for everybody involved in this at some whatever level whether it's a, a good and bad but you can't suddenly turn everybody's perception of what they thought was reality and what they thought was safety and you know what they thought was uh, their their world they lived in, and suddenly turn it on its head overnight, and that would just create. I mean, I even want to imagine what sort of chaos that would create. Mm. So I guess that there's, there's an element of that going on, and and you see, you know, say with Trump, and uh, I, you know, I've heard lots about him being a good guy, and and some of the stuff he's done is good. I'm still a little bit on the fence on some of that because, um, I, you know, I think it needs to come out properly to actually see what he's actually done. I think. Uh, but but yeah, I, I get. I've certainly seen a lot of stuff he's done has been been good. I'm not entirely 100% convinced of his motivation behind it, whether it is generally for good or whether it's of his own personal benefit. I don't know, but but I'd like to think it's for good, and and I always try and believe in the positive and until proven otherwise. So um, so I'm I'm happy to go in that camp for the time being. Um, 
And I think, um, you know, when, when it does come out, it needs to be done in a very controlled manner. Uh, how they do that, I don't know, you know, but, but yeah. it needs to come out is the point, you know. And uh, Well, I think, um, I think, I'd like to sort of uh, take it into a bit more of a positive place. Now, yeah. again, again, this is conspiracy stuff. Well, if you want to call it that. But um, if we talk about a little bit about Nasara and Gasara, do you, um, presumably you've looked into all of that? I, I do, I've not actually, no, no, I've not really, no. Oh, have you not? No, 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 sorry. <laughs> you, know, do you know what it is? No, I've got a clue. Oh, okay. Um, I never remember what it actually stands for. It's National Economic something, 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 and, and then it's okay. Global, global um, Economic. So basically, um, Gasara and Nasara are, um, is going to completely change our financial uh, system as we know it. Yeah. And it's, so, so the belief is, if what we're digesting is the truth, and actually, I do know a lot of this is the truth because it happened in the 50s. The military went into people's homes in America and, and stole their gold um, because the gold used to back the, the dollar. It was gold standard, wasn't it, originally? Yeah, yeah. Gold so standard. Yeah, then each dollar was backed by a, a piece of gold. Yeah. And they removed, the, they removed that and then they went into people's homes and stole the gold. Now, I know that is true. And even, even my friend's dad, who's a disbelief and thinks Trump's a twat, um, he remembers that. So. Yeah. Um, and then I've heard recently that they actually went to the Vatican and 65 plane loads of gold later, they, they've taken the gold back, back to America. Um, and there's apparently also lots of gold reserves hidden away in places like the Philippines and all that. So because, um, and, and JFK um, was very close to getting this implemented. And of course, then he got shot. So it's basically a much fairer global system for everyone, whereby you're not having to, like how we live at the moment, you earn your salary, you've got to pay your mortgage or your rent and your food and your bills and your taxes, the million taxes we've got to pay. And you've got a sweet FA left really um, to, to go and enjoy your life. So the whole idea of Nasara and Gasara is to pay everybody a basic salary, if you like, a basic income. Um, yeah. we, we can still all go out and, and work and be entrepreneurs and do whatever we want. And that obviously that money is ours. They're going to, um, so yeah, so they're going to pay a basic income to people. So the over 60s are going to be way better off. Um, there's going to be more benefits for the over 60s. Yeah. Um, there's, um, oh, just lost my train of thought. Um, oh yeah. So getting rid of income tax. Mm -hmm. um, getting rid of taxes on foods and medicines and things like that, but there'd, there'd still be a tax on things like televisions or whatever, you know, consumable goods. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we've got something ridiculous, like seven, I think we had something ridiculous, like 70 taxes introduced into this country alone in the last, I don't know, 20 years or so. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and we, we're both property people and I'm being hammered now um, when they ludicrously have taken away the relief on mortgage interest. So I'm, you, you know what I mean? So I'm having to now yeah, pay yeah, a, lot, that makes, a lot more tax. It's a lot of properties now untenable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It needs to deal with stack up anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this Nasara and Gasara is, is basically, is all part of the big plan, apparently. Um, mm -hmm. Which basically, if it does come off, and I really hope it does, um, can you imagine the impact that's going to have on the world? You know, this, yeah. This I mean, imagine if, you, if you're in a position in a, in, a, in a world then where your basic commodities, your food, your water, your heat, your light is all catered for exactly. free of charge. Yeah. Um, you can then choose to just live that existence if you, what you want to do without having to do anything else. Or you can go out to work to augment it so you can then go on and spend, you know, do the, the kind of entertainment aspects of it or... If you want to then still chase chase that dream and become a millionaire, you can you can go down that road as well, you know. But actually, it means you you end poverty, you end homelessness, you end, you know, starvation and hunger starvation. and, and yeah. poverty, all that stuff, um, literally overnight. And there's no yeah. reason why we can't do that. And again, it's a classic. I mean, I don't. I'm not. I'm not by any means an economist, and I don't understand the financial, you know, 
I don't have that that where for all to, to understand the financial aspects too much. But Christ, if the government can suddenly start printing money to pay all these businesses that haven't worked for three months, you know, eighty percent of all their salaries out of nothing, then you know, to me it just doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense. Like, how the hell can they do that? But then they can sit back and watch people starve to death, and you know, kids kids not be, be fed, and and people, you know, whole families be made homeless and not give them a house. You know, yeah, how, how can that work? Yeah. That question of are the government's looking after us, it's trying to look after our safety. Well, if it was, we, we would never have any homelessness, we'd never have any addiction, we'd never have any, you know, poverty and and you know, it's like these elderly people have worked all their life and then suddenly can't afford to heat their home in the height of winter and are freezing to death. Yeah. And oh but the government's looking after us, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah. yeah. But then they can suddenly print money and and suddenly I mean I I even want to know how much money has been sunk into businesses and and God knows what over the last four, three or four months. And so you're right. But that's the whole point is you plant that seed and you get people to ask their own questions. They might go, yeah, whatever, Mel. And then suddenly they'll, you know, a month later, they'll be thinking about something and it'll, it'll pop into their head and go, oh, I know, how, how, how is that working? You know, you know, I don't know how it's going to work. I mean, I think we're, we're, we're about to enter an absolute bloodbath of, uh, of, of job, you know, unemployment and, um, and God knows what. And I think we're about to hit the biggest recession this planet's seen for, you know, flipping, well, hundreds of years, I think. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I did think see that how it's all going to suddenly, suddenly end in, you know, well, Fourth of July, everybody's back at work, and then, you know, come September, everybody, it will all be fine, and we're just back to normal. And how, how's that? How can that be? You know, we've seen recessions over the years, and that's due to, you know, overspending and, you know, quantitative easing. You know, nearly destroyed us in 2009, didn't it? When when they they started printing money to get bail all the, the banks out of, you know, their, their stupidity and uh and now we've done that on an absolute you know we've, we've taken that that and, and done it a hundredfold haven't we you know so there's a lot of head in sand at the moment isn't there people thinking oh it's all right we're gonna get back to normal by the end of the year come next year we'll be all fine think like, i'm sure it is gonna be fine next year well the I'm thing is, sure is the thing is without nasara and gasara if that is true um then you're absolutely right the session would be you yeah. know i've already heard that a load of um big furniture suppliers like harvey yeah, Harvey's and Furniture Village and all those. They've already gone into administration. Yeah. Um, Loads have. Debenhams has gone into administration again. Uh, Kath Kitson has gone into administration again. You know, it's, uh, that's just a handful. There's, there's tons of them. That's even, even looking at the small businesses, you know, the, the, the self-employed or the, you know, the tiny, the tiny businesses that actually, actually the, the lifeblood of this country, you know, that employ most people. To your small like engineering companies or your small manufacturers and, small retailers you know independent retailers they're, they're, how the hell are they surviving yeah. well back onto the positive nasara yeah that's right yeah, yeah. it's going to talk us all out it's also going to pay off our it's going to clear all our debts as well that's the other good thing with it because my understanding is the way that we've been charged for mortgages and, and loans and credit cards and all the rest of it is highly highly illegal we don't know that because we don't well, it's money that doesn't exist in it you, you, exactly. you borrow money that doesn't exist and get charged interest on something that's not real exactly <laughs> Um, that works so yeah. but again i'm not an economist or a financial uh, wizard so i can't i can't really comment on all that but um yeah i mean then there's something needs to happen somewhere to actually make all this half the world's going to starve to death you know yeah. or we're going to go into hyperinflation like like the um like russia did um after uh, the war came down in, in, the, in the early 90s where a loaf of bread is going to cost us six thousand pounds you know it's, mm. that's the other thing. i don't know it's going to be interesting to see how it goes and, and there's got it. Hopefully, I put my faith like you. There's a plan somewhere to to actually sort all this out at the end of it, because uh, otherwise we're all cream cracker, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, so uh, but I'm yeah. keep, I'm keeping the faith, and um, I see. Yeah, me too. I see good things coming. So, um, well, I think I think we'll probably close there. Um, thank you Perfect. so much. Um, it's been, it's been really enjoyable, actually. Grantly, if people wanted to uh find you how can they find you uh probably on facebook there's not many grantlers around um yeah but you can follow me on facebook if you want to connect um happy to talk about stuff i'm, I'm all more happy to engage in um you know the other side of it if people think that actually what i'm talking is absolute rubbish then that's fine i'm happy i'm not going to waste too much time going around circular arguments but i'm happy to chat to someone if they want to find out why i think these things you know yeah you know, a lot of people think you know that we all fall into this camp of being relatively you know intelligent uh, with a bit of common sense and um 
you know normal people and um uh, and have some slightly strange far out views um i'm happy to talk to people about why why i've fallen into that camp and um and the reasons behind it and again yeah just happy to talk with anyone really so cool well yeah. i'll put it in the show notes but it's grantly clapham um that's probably the best best way yeah 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 cool okay well thank you very much for your time that's today okay. pleasure as always Mel. yeah yes it's been lovely and um see you soon and i hope uh, listeners that you didn't find us too bonkers uh, and perhaps you've learned a couple of things so um, yeah. just just keep your eyes open really and just question question what you're being told versus what you actually experience in reality is, is probably the bottom line i think from my point of view you know and then if that doesn't if they don't marry up then ask why yeah and start your own little journey and and find your own truth absolutely okay thanks again grantley Smash in. cheers mel thanks take care you too